Thank you. Thank you for setting that up, Sam. Hi, everybody. I want to take a minute to, to let some folks in and welcome everybody to, to this event that we have today. Um, my name is Ralph Wolf. I'm the program director for the Sustainable Southeast Partnership. Um, I'm also the sixth vice president for Clinkett and Haida. I just wanted to, to say thank you to everybody for being here. I, I know it's a busy time and there's a lot of things happening right now. And thank you for sit, taking some time out of your day to, to come and be with us as we get prepared to share some news with you that I really feel is good for the region. Um, my name is Ralph Wolf. I was born and raised in Craig. Um, my mom is Charlene Wolf and dad is Bill Wolf. Um, my grandmother was Evelyn James. I just, uh, I want to take a couple minutes to, to, to thank some folks who helped get me to where I am. Um, you know, the uncles and the aunties that put in the work to make this possible, the grandmas and grandpas that take time to be with grandparents, grandchildren. I just really appreciate you and want you to let you know that the work isn't for nothing. And I personally thank my grandparents and uncles and aunties for all that work that you guys have put into me. Um, I was born and raised in Craig. I, uh, I went to school and I found my wife and moved to Yakutat with her, her hometown. We've been here for about 10 years. I have two, two boys, Jackson and Jace, who are the light of my life. Uh, as I said before, I'm the program director for the Sustainable Southeast Partnership, the sixth vice president for Clinkett and Haida, um, Eagle Frog from and Haida from Prince of Wales. And I'm going to introduce you to a couple of the folks who are helping me announce today. Um, and our, our final one just showed up. Thank you for, for joining us, Marina. Uh, Marina is Clinkett from Prince of Wales Island also. Um, she is Takwan AD from Kenya Kwan. Marina is the administrator for the organized village of Kasan. She got started in politics initially through her involvement growing up with the Alaska Native Sisterhood, where she learned from the elders around her, which I you know, mentioned earlier, it, it's very important to us. At 28 years old, Marina spends the majority of her, of her free time on the land harvesting food and medicines and shares it with the community as you see if you follow her on Facebook or Instagram. You always see her sharing. So thank you for joining us, Marina. Uh, we also have President Richard Chasiaish Peterson. He's Clinkett and Kogwan Khan. He grew up in Kasan, is a lifelong resident of Southeast. Uh, prior to being elected as the president of Clinkett and Haida in 2014, President Peter Sir, Peterson served as the executive director uh, for the Prince of Wales Tribal Enterprise Consortium, or POWTEC. Uh, he was president of the organized village of Kassan and mayor of the city and chamber of Kassan also, and a member of the Southeast Island School District. Um, up next, we also have former Lieutenant Governor Fran Almer, who also sits on the Nature Conservancy uh, Global Board and is the chair. She's the former mayor of Juneau and uh, former chancellor of the University of Alaska and currently at Harvard right now. And she is adopted into the Kogwantan clan. Thanks for joining us, uh, Fran. Up next, I have Anthony Milot, and he's the CEO of the Sea Alaska Corporation. Uh, he guides where he gets to the guide's decisions directly impacting Southeast people, communities, and the environment, all while focusing on profits and benefits. You know, I, I've seen it firsthand, and I can really appreciate where Anthony comes from, and you can see his passion and his um, ad advocacy for communities. Um, to really bring a, a different portion into the into the corporate world. Um, 
and it's just really nice to see, and I really appreciate that. He's he's the Clinket Eagle of the Sogway D clan, and also Koyakon at at the Baskin of the Caribou clan. And also we have the chairman of the board, Joe Nelson from Sea Alaska, who's a Takeway D or Brown Bear from Yakutat. Um, he's Kwashkaquan Yadi, the of Yakutat also. He serves as the co-chair of AFN and a trustee of Sitka's Outer Coast College and a director for Alaska Legal Services and Spruce Root. So I just want to, to thank you guys for being here today and helping us share this message uh, to the region and to the to the folks out around the world, putting it out there. Um, so before we get started with some questions from these folks, uh, we have a video for you guys that we're going to watch. Um, so what we have here is a quick, uh, a quick look at what the SSP is and who the people are. I think, you know, trying to see how the SSP works and, and who we work with is, you know, us is a struggle sometimes because we're in a bunch of communities and we're not, um, I feel like we're not visible at some times, but we put in a lot of work, you know, so I think it's important for us to share some of this work that we do with you guys. And, you know, we have some, we have what we call catalysts in community who help work through planning and getting ideas from community members to, to work on things that are important to communities, projects that are important to community, energy, food, um, forests, fisheries, economic development. I mean, even looking at tourism and, and seeing how our voices in communities can be heard. And I think that's the important part here is we're trying to figure out how to get the community's voices and priorities out there. And that's, I feel we do a good job of that. And I think in this video, you'll see that. So Sam, if you would start the video, please. The Sustainable Southeast Partnership started as an idea. That Southeast Alaska need not be a region of conflict. That we could come together across divides, that we could build a stronger future for our communities, our region, our lands and waters, and our people together. The Sustainable Southeast Partnership is a dynamic collective uniting diverse skills and perspectives to strengthen cultural, ecological, and economic resilience across Southeast Alaska. Our network includes tribal governments, community-minded organizations, local businesses, native corporations and entities, culture bearers, educators, and state and federal agencies, storytellers, and more. We envision self-determined and connected communities where Alaska Native values continue to inspire society, shape our relationships, and ensure that each generation thrives on healthy lands and waters. Whether through community forestry initiatives that are defining what collaborative land management can look like on the Tongass, feeding our people during a pandemic, catalyzing affordable housing solutions in our villages, or supporting our youth to develop job opportunities and optimism for their future. The SSP is improving the lives of Southeast Alaskans and the resilience of our region. We are proving that when the Alaska Native values that have always governed our relationships to the land, to our economy, and to each other are shared as a foundation for collaborative work, we can accomplish great things. SSP makes me feel like I belong, like I'm part of something bigger. Like I have valuable contributions for my community and to the region. Like I'm wrapped in a blanket of friendship and support. The SSP gives me hope for the future of all Southeast Alaskans. The SSP provides a powerful platform for sharing resources, creating partnerships, and finding local sustainable solutions to Southeast's unique energy challenges. Part of this process is not just healing our lands, but healing our relationships with one another and making the future possible for my grandbabies 
and their grandbabies. I have found that SSP provides an outstanding method for effective collaboration on matters relating to human resources, on natural resources such as what you see behind me, and all of those resources we as people want to be sustainable. The SSP means working to help local businesses thrive. The SSP is a commitment to future generations. The SSP means trust and collaboration. It means leaning in and learning together. The SSP means doing the work with other awesome people who also love and live in this place. The, the SSP, SSP is progress over perfection. It's a different way of doing business. It's a different way of looking at natural resources and stewardship for the lands and the waters that are important to my community and to myself. Thank you, SSP. To me, SSP is a way for the communities of Southeast Alaska to work together so that the region and its resources are managed and sustained by people that are from these communities and are indigenous to these lands. Building a robust and diversified economy in the face of cycles of boom and bust extraction, healing from colonial trauma, addressing a rapidly changing climate or a global pandemic. The challenges we face are enormous, but we believe we can meet them if we stand together with our roots intertwined. We're surrounded by opportunity, by cultural ingenuity, by grit and persistence by people who show up for one another again and again. What we're announcing today is building a new model for the future for our homelands. It's taking the work and relationships we've built for over a decade and allowing us to level up, to go deeper and wider. And whether you've been involved for the last 10 years or if this is your first time hearing about us, there's now a role in it for you too. I think it, it goes to show the depth and reach that we're able to get to by hearing those stories. And I think, first of all, thank you, Bethany and Calm's team for putting that together. And I, I hope you can see our intentionality behind what we do. And I hope that comes across because that's the important part. We are intentional about collaborating with communities. We are intentional about, about working within the community and letting their voices be echoed, not us deciding for them. And I hope that comes across. And I hope you could see that from the work we do. And hopefully you'll hear more about. Um, without further ado, though, I'm going to turn it over to Anthony and Joe. Great. Gonna cheese, Ralph. You know, it's tough to to build on the video and and your comments, especially in a, a short time period. But I was asked just to to quickly express why C Alaska believes in the SSP, and it's everything you saw in the video. So it, it may sound repetitive, but I think it, it's just so core to how strongly. Sea Alaska is committed to the SSP and its work and its people and our communities. As stated, the SSP has been built through trust and years of relationship building. You, you, you can't not start there. It has appropriately focused its attention on tribal communities and elevating our tribal partners. Because of the trust building, the SSP is fortunate to be able to listen to our community priorities. They are great at attracting and, in, and growing new partners, partners that share our vision for the region, partners that put resources into community projects, and most important, the resources that come from the broad partnership that is the network most often make the difference between a successful community project or a failure. The SSP knows how to work together to create positive outcomes 
and they build capacity within our communities to partner and broaden, broaden their own resource base. All of this leads to more successful projects occurring within our communities that build cumul cumulative progress towards our vision of healthy and sustainable tribal communities. It's about as simple as I can make it. And I'll pass to Joe to provide more context of why we are excited about the ability of the Seacoast Trust to fund the work of the SSP in perpetuity. On to you, Joe. Good Chish. Thank you, Anthony. Thank you, Ralph. Thanks to the team for that video. That was uh, setting the bar pretty good, pretty high for us to get over that bar for the, the announcement today. And it made me think I need to pull something out of my hat here, something special. Uh, and I'll do a little try here. I don't know if you can hear the sound effects, but it's, it's the drum roll that we all come to <laughs> uh, appreciate. As this builds up, uh, this has been a long time in the making uh, and it is also long overdue. I'm gonna start with uh, a thank you for the, the SSP, which we get used to the lingo, Sustainable Southeast Partnership, the team, all the folks that have been involved in the last 10 years, the ones that are carrying it forward now, the ones that really quickly pulled out their gadgets and put that video together uh, just this last week or so. Uh, and we're all just a small part of this, but really the stories that came out in that couple of moments got to the heart of why we're here and why we're doing this. And there is something new, something different about it. Along the way, we're gonna hear about indigenous led stewardship. Uh, and, and if you pause on, those mo on that for just a moment, indigenous stewardship, you know, th that's a little bit redundant, indigenous stewardship, just because as indigenous people, we are natural stewards of the land. It doesn't matter which administration comes, which administration goes. We're going to be here through all the various administrations. Uh, and, and it's time to go ahead and step forward and lead. And uh, it's the folks on the ground in our communities that are been doing that good work. We're here to help support that work. And what we did, we being Sea Alaska at the beginning of this year, is put out a challenge uh, of $10 million, looking for a partner to step out front with us to match that $10 million uh, and really try to grow a fund, work towards a million dollar, 10 or $100 million fund that the interest on that fund would help continue this vision and all the good work behind the Sustainable Southeast Partnership, all the great projects that have been happening the last 10 plus years and, and sh put some security and some certainty out there. It's just a, 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 a thought, an idea that we didn't come up with on our own. Uh, it, you know, these indigenous ideas go back tens of thousands of years. And we need to thank um, the Nature Conservancy for being a part of this for a long time and being really, I think the right partner to step out front with us today. Uh, the Nature Conservancy organized a trip some years ago with a group of us from Southeast, went to BC, we visited with Coast Funds, uh, with the Guardians Network down in BC. I think Brody Guy is on the, the Zoom today. He's been a champion of the effort and very much a great mentor for us and has helped and we appreciate the support of our colleagues up and down the coast. Uh, and, and then TNC, you know, TNC, we have big TNC as it's known in the lingo with us today with uh, our own Fran Almer who chairs the big TNC, uh, but TNC is, is global, you know, and we need to thank uh, Eric with the Emerald Edge and Steve with the state team and Christine and Crystal with the, the Juno Southeast team. And then Ralph and Elena with uh, Spruce Root, really for being knee deep in this work for a long time uh, and really just proven out a model that we're, we're not rolling the dice on anything really here. We are going all in on something that makes a lot of sense for the whole globe today. 
and, and that's a new way of getting to better outcomes. Outcomes, as Don mentioned in the video, that are, are going to ensure a brighter future for our grandchildren. This opportunity today is not about locking up a bunch of land. It's really about unlocking a powerful shared future together. Uh, and we're happy to be a part of it and, and just excited for, for everybody that's been a part of it that is tuning into to dates uh, and, and coming to the table to, to help because you know there's only one planet uh, and we really need to wrap our arms around it together. There's not really an us and them anymore. They're just us. So let's get used to being us. Uh, and that us includes the indigenous people of Southeast Alaska, which is happy to partner with the Nature Conservancy today. With that, I'm gonna go ahead and hand it to TNC, the Nature Conservancy's global chair, our own Fran Almer. We're, we're thankful for all your service over the years uh, and uh, appreciate you and your organization partnering uh, on many different levels with us. Sheesh. Thank you, Joe, Anthony, and Ralph Kunishchish for letting me be with you today and for all of your leadership. Uh, I'm actually calling in today from the traditional lands of the Denina people, but for 30 years I lived and called the Tongas home. I lived in Juneau and, and fell in love with the place. I, I came to appreciate how special it is in many different ways. The culture and history of the Alaska Native people who have been stewards of the lands there for thousands of years, the specialness of the habitat uh, that supports bears and salmon and eagles and whales and, and the people who rely on them, and the importance of the Tongass really as the lungs of North America, as, as a place where natural climate solutions are every single day contributing to mitigating against climate change. So for all of those reasons, as well as many others, the Nature Conservancy has been involved working with partners in Southeast Alaska for over 20 years, offering up science expertise and attempts to support collaboration. But it really wasn't until the indigenous led conservation efforts of people you see on this screen and many others who came together with this vision for Southeast and the Southeast Sustainable Partnership as others have already said today, is really a model for the world. So it was really clear why it would make sense for the Nature Conservancy to step up and also provide funding necessary to make good on the Sea Alaska offer of $10 million as a, as a match. And so for the 7 million that the Nature Conservancy is willing to say, yes, we believe in this and we're going to help raise money from others as well to make a go of it. I, I do want to encourage everyone who is on this call this morning to consider being part of this partnership. It is an exciting opportunity to really make something happen that has durability and sustainability and that recognizes how important it is that collaborative land and resource management with indigenous people leading the way is what, what, what really makes sense in Alaska and in many other places in the world. So again, good sheesh for all of your leadership in this space. It's, it's really an honor for me to be joining you today. Back to you, Ralph. I, I didn't think, uh, a couple of years ago, being in the position I was and growing up the way I did with who was around me, I would not have thought about collaboration the way I do today and partnership. And, you know, this work has opened my eyes to a different path for us, to a different um, trajectory that I think and feel. You would have said two or three years ago, I would have been doing this kind of work being 
community developing, economic development, working directly with conservation orgs that actually hear me and feel what I'm saying and listen and act. The important thing is the action that they say and do. Whether it's TNC, Sitka Conservation Society, I deal with them every day and every day it's the same. And I just really cherish that because there was a time and a place where I would have not thought that that was possible. So this commitment, this believing in our work, the believing in how we move forward, our vision, our process, our communities, our people telling and saying what we want to do with this. This is our money for our people directly. And I, I am speechless. The trust, the faith is there. And I just thank you so much, Fran. Joe, Anthony, I, yeah. Um, but that's not what SSP is all about. We have a couple other folks here who I'd like to talk with about what it means to them. Um, first of all, President Peterson, thanks for taking time to be here and allowing us to use this. Um, to use this this venue of your the hosting portion of this and and I have a question for you um, about what the Seacoast Trust is. Um, you know, it, it's it's money. It's it's ten million from Sea Alaska and seven million from from TNC that is there to help fund this work forward. Um, can you talk about what that commitment means to to you for TNH and and what you think of your home? Yes, thanks, Gunchish, how uh, Ralph and uh, Gunchish, how uh, to Joe, Anthony, Fran. You know, I think this is still a little ambiguous. You know, what what exactly is happening today? Ten million from Sea Alaska, seven million from the Nature Conservancy. But I have to go back a little bit for me and my role in this. This has been a really um, lifelong professional dream of mine to see happen. Uh, when I was uh, the president of the organized village of Kassan, guys like Rob Sanderson and Anthony Christensen and, and myself and others, we were working with the Forest Service. And, you know, we've had a lot of hurdles to overcome in some of these relationships. Uh, you know, a history of uh, Forest Service burning cabins and smokehouses and and things, but we've come a long ways in working together. And we were aware of the Guardians program in British Columbia, and then the um, and what they were doing there with their trust. And really, it's indigenous led, but it's a collaboration of the federal government, the local governments, our tribes and conservation groups. And sometimes you would think those that's not a mix that would work. But it, it does and it can and it takes that desire and the um, you just have to want things to work sometimes so you make them work and you get over those differences and that's what we've been able to do this is this is a monumentous occasion it's hard to really uh, capture that but and Joe alluded earlier a trip that we took to um, Vancouver pre-pandemic where we met with Seacoast Trust and the Guardians there in BC. And this is what we'd been wanting to bring here for years. But quite frankly, you know, it took uh, bringing like the Nature Conservancy to the table who on the global scale, they, they're the partner there in BC as well. But if Sea Alaska hadn't stepped up and said, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna commit these funds, we're gonna be the catalyst for this, this would never happen. And so this is gonna be indigenous led. This is uh, at the local level. And I'm sure people are watching right now and you see those of us here in Juneau, um, you know, but you, we have Marina here who's from our, is in our villages. I think we're all from the villages, but she's in the village. 
And, you know, um, Kassan, Kay, Kuna, others are, have been instrumental. Their, their tribal leadership has been instrumental in getting us here. And, and again, bringing Sea Alaska to the table. And I think, you know, when Joe, you know, I don't want to put words into Joe's mouth, but when we were in Canada and were able to see firsthand what they're able to accomplish by investing in communities, having community-led pro projects, um, I, I think he was fully on board from that moment on, because as he said, indigenous-led is what matters. Having our values in place, being able to have firsthand experience in the communities, what impacts our communities, what changes will really mean something for our communities. And, and let's admit, we're at, in our communities, we're at the forefront of climate change. And so we need our, our partners to want to help us fund that change and be a part of that change. And so, um, you know, to me, this is about 15, 20 years of dreams come to reality and what we're doing with our guardians program and having this trust that's going to um, give us the ability to leverage and build on is um, monumental. And I could go on all day, so I better uh, defer. Thanks, President Peterson. Uh, Marina, um, I guess the same questions, you know, um, what does this commitment mean for, for you? This commitment is really big. Um, for the last almost decade, the OBK has been a partner with the Sustainable Southeast Partnership, and we've had a community catalyst. And with that, we've been able to create a lot of economic opportunity and increase a lot of our local health through projects that are locally identified as high priority, not identified as high priority for us. Um, and we've been able to do things such as like lead local harvesting events, um, strengthen our local gardening endeavors, and overall make sure that our food security is nice and strong. Um, and the financial component has been really helpful for us because those funds have not been tightly restricted. We're able to use those funds in the way that our community understands that they need to be used. Um, naturally, we're pretty frugal people uh, in Southeast Alaska just because of the way that the economy goes. And so when we get these funds, we know how they need to be used and we're able to maximize them and i think when it comes to like our our cultural tourism or ecotourism that's really important for us we have stories to tell and they should be told by our people and so we've been able to support that effort bring um, a lot of dollars into our community through the economy teach our history um, and grow our workforce with a lot of these dollars that are coming in and it brings a lot of good to my heart to know that there's an investment in this that we'll be able to keep moving forward and keep being able to use these funds uh, locally in our communities to propel us forward because we each have different priorities. Um, and the network that's created out of the Sustainable Southeast Partnership is one of the most valuable things that we have next to the dollars that come with it because uh, we're able to replicate projects and learn from each other across the board. I, yeah, I can't, I can't agree more. The ambiguity that we get from this, right? And I think that's important to mention that like, that's where that 20, 20 million goal is from, is to maintain the network and grow, continue growing how, how we're able to do this work. Um, it's about giving that ambiguity to tribes. It's about giving that ambiguity to communities to do what they want, how they want with these funds. So I think that's a very important thing to, to highlight there. So thank you. Thank you all. Um, another, uh, I got some questions for everybody, everybody here. And, you know, uh, looking at our time and figuring out where we're going here, uh, I'll, I'll ask for about a two to three minute answer. Um, and I'll start with Fran first, uh, Fran. How, how do these 
partners standing together make to make this announcement represent a big change? And what are you hoping will be achieved through this work? A huge change. I would just say um, for the years that I lived in Southeast, the Tongass timber conflict was bitter and divisive. I mean, it, it pitted neighbor against neighbor, loggers versus fishermen, town versus town. It, we, it was quite the political football. And every time, you know, there'd be one side winning, then the other side would feel like they, you know, didn't matter. And then the other side would win. It was, it was really a tough time to think clearly about what a long-term sustainable future for Southeast would look like. What was very necessary was a common vision that understood that there would be peace in the Tongass. If people sat down and listened to each other and found the, the value-based decisions that others have talked about already this morning. And so what's different and what, what is my hope and what I see happening as a result of this partnership I see a partnership that incorporates indigenous values. I see a partnership that emphasizes community well-being. I see a partnership with a long-term vision of sustainability for future generations, not just today. And I see a partnership that is really focused on the life-sustaining health of the lands and waters on which all life depends. And the Tongass is a perfect place for this. And for me, it is just a tremendous joy to see this happening with people who from many different places, many different communities, many different organizations are committed to making it work. Thank you so much, Fran. Um, Anthony, the, the same question. Yeah, thank you. No, it's, it's just so great to hear from partners that, that are speaking our language, that, that uh, are saying the same things that, that I wanted to say. It's, it's tough to follow, but it, I, think, I think I can add on to that a bit because not only is, is this super exciting, I, the moment in time is, it is absolutely perfect. At the same time that, that we put this forward, our own government put forward similar strategies, uh, executive orders for a renewed focus to address climate change, executive orders on new conservation strategies, executive orders on the want to create inclusive growth, to create social justice. And the agencies that work within the administration are responding. And I'll, I, I wanna read specifically from one of those, but I also wanna highlight at the same point in time, the Canadian government is doubling down on their investment in indigenous guardianship. They're putting hundreds of millions of dollars to work because they believe that it is an investment in rural community economic growth, tribal community economic growth, while also creating positive environmental outcomes. And so going to the Department of Interior, the USDA, the Department of Commerce announcement, they called America the Beautiful. They said that the absolute central recommendation of their report is that if we're going to kick off a decade long national conservation effort, it has to be faithful to core principles that include a commitment to collaboration, support for voluntary and locally led conservation and honoring of tribal sovereignty and private property rights, all, all indispensable to achieving durable outcomes that meaningfully improve the lives of Americans. Those are the principles that the SSP works under already. Who knows, maybe, maybe the DOI or USDA read some of our, our work to put this together. Uh, it just ties so perfectly out. Another one of their principles, pursue conservation and restoration approaches that create jobs and support healthy communities. 
the SSP is lined up, has many projects to, uh, to achieve that priority. Just like the SSP, these agencies believe that we can change conservation approaches to be more collaborative, to be locally led with a core focus on supporting indigenous stewardship and that this change will not only create the conservation and enviro environmental outcomes we're all looking for, they will also create positive community and economic outcomes for years to come. Just like our federal government, Sea Alaska's investment is based on achieving health and wellness for our people, community sustainability, along with the positive environmental outcomes that our communities care about. I, I just believe there has never been so much impetus to get this right. And I feel fortunate that we have achieved the goals of our initial Seacoast Trust campaign in the midst of all of this. Yeah, I, I think the timing couldn't be more right, Anthony, or right um, with everything that's going on. Um, uh, Marina, the, the same question as well. Yeah, I think um, having all of us here together, different partners together from different um, entities is powerful and represents a big change in a way that we're not operating on hearsay anymore. We're working together, we're bringing all of our tools to the project in trying, instead of trying to finish a house on our own. And so I think that um, shows a big, um, it mirrors our partnership in general. We all come from different entities, different knowledge, different backgrounds and resources. And with that, that's how we operate as this big um, moving machine through Southeast Alaska that's focused on sustainability. Um, and so, like I said, I see that really heavily reflected in this panel here. Um, we're not operating on here, say we're talking with each other, we're having dialogue and um, we're sharing all of our resources that we have with each other throughout Southeast Alaska. And then I think more important, more importantly, we're trying to be that good model for not just the rest of the nation, but the rest of the world as well in these sustainable endeavors that we know will bring us forward in the future. Thank you, Marina. Yeah, I'm looking forward. Like I can't, I can't wait to continue doing this work. Um, President Peterson. Thanks. Yeah. You know, I'm so grateful for this opportunity to partner with Sea Alaska and the Nature Conservative Conservation on this. Um, you know, I think what's great about it, too, is that it recognizes that we, the Indigenous people, our tribal governments, you know, we're the permanent stewards of these lands. We are the people of the Tongass. And so taking having us be such an important um, lead in this and having our voices be what drives and our values and reflecting from our leadership, I think has been really great. It's what gets me excited about this. You know, in my own history, it hasn't always been really positive with conservation groups. It hasn't always been really positive with the US government, right? But this is us kind of defining a new relationship. This is us saying we're all equal players in this, our voice, our indigenous voice matters and that of course we should be in the in this role we should be in the driver's seat behind so much of this that our values should be placed in what moves us forward for generations and you know when you talk to folks like marina and and joe and anthony you'll hear us talk about those generations over and over and when you have partners like the Nature Conservancy and you hear the same words echoed back from folks like Fran and, and they're, they're not just speaking what we want to hear, that, that's what they believe too. It changes the dynamic. I think it really helps us move this forward. And these are community led projects. These are going to be, you know, the projects that we do aren't going to be us in other places telling them how to do it in the community, but it's going to be community led. It's going to be community priorities. I, I am so excited about that. And I think that just, you know, again, we're about changing the narrative. You know, I've heard so much in my life. Well, this didn't work. Well, that doesn't mean that we can't try again, that we can't take a different approach and redefine what it is that um, would be successful and wouldn't, what wouldn't be. 
you know, and that's what I'm really passionate about. I think this is funding that is about a different kind of conservation, one that understands our people and our communities and understands that we're inseparable components of a healthy environment. We have had, you know, I've dealt with groups who said, you know, we need to worry about the salmon. We need to worry about this. We need to worry about that. And I've always been of the mind, we have to take a look at the whole picture. You can't worry about one species or one anything. We're all part of this. I, as a Clinket man, knowing that I have, you know, over 10,000 years of history in, in the Tongass, I know that my roots are deeper and longer than anybody else's or there anything else's. We, our people watch the Tongass grow and that this forest has taken care of us for generations and who better than us to lead the efforts to care for our, our forests and our resources and that we recognize we are as important as a resource as anything else in this environment. So I think that's the narrative we're changing, that it's culturally indigenous led, that the voices of our young people like Marina, us older guys like Joe and Anthony and myself, and, and then our elders, you know, it's about the generations. And it's taking that generational knowledge and leading this effort. And I think that's the difference. And that's gonna be the change. And I think that's why this is gonna be successful. And this contribution from Sea Alaska, this wouldn't be possible without it. But you know, the Nature Conservancy, they stepped up because they saw that commitment. We have to, now it's on us to prove that this is gonna work because we're gonna need, you know, we wanna build this as Joe said to hundred million dollars and have be able to do these projects based off the interest. That means we need to show people, you know, this, this is worth investing in that these ideals and indigenous um, leadership are the future, are going to be what help change, you know, things for the better and that are going to be led by our values. Thank you, all of you, for sharing your, your experiences, your time, your, your feeling and your passion here. Um, I have about a minute for each of you for a final thought, and I'll start with Joe. Thanks, Ralph. Uh, fi final thought, I'm gonna close on the healing aspect of this whole effort here. You know, the, the, the shift that's happening is a shift from transactions and, and litigation over transactions later and other transactions and getting away from the fight or flight mode of waking up every day. Uh, and coming to the table with uh, your hearts, your knowledge, uh, ready to work and, and to help solve problems. Uh, in the video, we heard the phrase progress over perfection that's embedded in SSP. Uh, we don't have all the answers, but we, we do have the will to do better and to do it together. Uh, a $20 million fund on that, a per percent of market value spend is about a million bucks. Uh, doing that right now, that's kind of a status quo. So we do want to grow it to have something more impactful. And if USDA just doubled that real quickly with their announcement, you know, we would double it real quickly. So it's all very within the realm of very doable. Uh, but the, the difference really is the shift from transactions to really coming back around to relationships. And that's what healing is all about. Healing is about understanding connections, understanding relations. And our, our indigenous communities, we, we all acknowledge each other uh, from the beginning, from the get-go. And it's not just acknowledgement, it's about reciprocity. It's about shared togetherness and a sense of purpose together. And uh, that reciprocity goes hand in hand with healing. And this is really uh, gonna be a small step in, in, a, in a big shift towards that, that type of um, focus on, let's do this together for the benefit of our grandkids because we only have one planet. Thanks, Joe. Uh, Fran? Yeah, two quick things. Uh, there are 250 people on this call today, and I can't help but think that each and every one of you who are listening to this um, have, hasn't been touched by it because 
This is such an amazing change and it is such a, a remarkable and I think opportune kind of thing for you to be part of. So I guess my pitch is if you have the ability to be part of this effort in any way, I hope you will consider doing that. And donating is one way, talking to other people is another way, uh, spreading the word to politicians, to community leaders who maybe have never heard of it. I think that is a role for you as well. And finally, I just wanna say, I, I am a grandmother and I worry about planet earth. I worry about our people. I worry about our resources. And it gives me joy to know that a sustainable management strategy for the Tongass can be part of the solution set that our world needs. Gunas Chish. Chish, Fran, uh, Marina. Yeah, to echo what, what Fran says, basically, I hope that there's um, a lot more investment into this trust. And with that, I hope we are able to increase our partnership because as I said earlier, the financial component is so important, but the network that we create is really important as well. And the way that we're able to pair that together and get projects done here in Southeast Alaska is incredible. And I'm really excited to see where the future goes. Um, out of anything I've really believed in in a long time, investing in this trust is, is something that I really do believe in for the future. Thank you, Marina. Um, Anthony? Yeah, thank you all. Um, I, 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 I want to mention the leverage within this structure. I'm a, I'm a finance guy, and so the, the concept of leverage is important. You see it here. See Alaska's 10 million couldn't stand alone. It took a partner like TNC to stand side by side us. And now we have a, we can fund a meaningful portion of the SSP budget. It's gonna take more partners to come in to invest, to create that whole concept of healing and wellness that we need for our tribal communities in Southeast Alaska. Anybody that's interested in the concept of inclusive growth and social justice for tribal communities, you have to come visit our communities. We have faced a hundred years of issues that have led to where we sit today. It may take a hundred years of efforts to help us recover and become the healthy communities that we have been for 10,000 years and we know how to. This is that start. Not every foundation can invest in an endowment. You know, government entities can't invest in an endowment. So there are many other ways to invest in the work of the SSP. The federal government is putting significant resources into our efforts. So when you think of the leverage, it's not just the million dollars in, in foundational uh, budget for the SSP. It's the, all the projects that the SSP has. And, and we have a we have a, a, a summary document put together by EcoTrust, another interesting partner within the network that showed that for every dollar of SSP budget, they create five to seven times that amount of funding into community priority projects. So a million dollar foundational budget means that five to seven million in community projects are occurring every single year. And again, that is why Sea Alaska is excited. We want to share that message. Uh, we're sharing the, the Seacoast Trust website, the SSP website, but any and all of us are available to have one-on-one -on -one conversations with anybody who wants to learn more. Thanks, Anthony. And, and finally, President Peterson, any final thoughts? Yeah, I think, you know, Again, if we're going to heal from the past, it's going to take us working together in an innovative and um, thinking outside of the box. And I think this is exactly that. And I look at the work that the Sustainable Southeast Partnership has done over the last few years with our, our local tribes, kind of sets the model for that growth. And I think, you know, you hear a lot um, from our group about investing in this and, and I absolutely want to see uh, other groups and, and folks invest, but I know 
that that means we need to um, really show and deliver right now. The, the onus is on us. We have to deliver. We have to show that we can do this with uh, our indigenous values, our leadership, and again, um, building partnerships that we didn't think were possible before. You know, it it's, hasn't always been an easy road and it's easy for us to say, oh, it's been hard working for conservation groups. Well, they might say the same thing. But right now we know that we've got to work together. We've got to find that common ground. And I think the Seacoast Trust is that common ground, something that we can um, invest in, build upon and see our tribes flourish with unrestricted funds that they can use as matches and to leverage to do more. And it's kind of that uh, SSP model, you know, for every dollar they see seven and a half dollars. Well, I believe that if we use this money to leverage, we can do bigger, sustainable, long lasting projects that live on beyond us into generations. So again, gonna choose how for this opportunity. I just want to say thank you to all the, the panelists first. I'll, I'll try to be brief here. It might run a minute or two over. But thank you so much for taking the time to be here and share this exciting news. Thank you for sharing our vision at SSP. I think that was the important part in why you were chose. Thank you for everybody getting on and and, and, and listening to what, how we feel and, and the direction we're looking at. But I think there's a couple important things I want to emphasize. Thank you, Sea Alaska, for the 10 million match. And thank you, TNC, for the 7 million to that match. I mean, we're looking for another 3 million still to realize our first goal, but that's by no means our overall goal. That goal allows us sustainability as a network. It allows us to keep going in the direction we are, and it allows us to fundraise for projects, not for our support, not to keep the network going, but it allows us to directly focus our attention on projects, on grants, on communities. That the direct work that we're trying to do and get out there, that's what it allows us to focus on. So gonna cheese everyone for that. Um, I really feel like this changes the tone and how we deal with folks, how we work together. This is a building block in how we're moving forward. This is a collaborative approach that takes the indigenous peoples and the community first, rather than the other way around. And I think that's the emphasis that I wanna end on. Community first. It takes us to make it work and we need the community's voice is heard. I just, I'm so happy and I'm so excited and I was so nervous, but thank you all for being here. And thank you all for taking time out of your day to share the excitement that we have. And that's all I have, but thank you.